world, you're going to have real faith. You've got to have real faith. You know what it means like you have real leather, genuine leather, right? Not pleather, leather. A real deal, the real thing. Anytime you put the word real in front, it seems to have more authority, right? Well, James, who's the brother of Jesus, he hears what Paul is saying. And he says, well, wait a minute. I want to say one more thing. If you want to have real faith, because see, there's a lot of phony religions out there then and now. And there are people that they really think they're a Christian, but they really aren't. What? How can you say that? I didn't. James did. He says, he talks about real Christians versus counterfeit Christians, authentic belief and fake believers. And he tries to help us understand it, okay? So here's what he says. Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Do we have it? Nope, oh, we don't have it. Okay. This is the most controversial verse in the book of James, okay? It's one in the Bible. Every cult uses it. The Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, uh, Transcendental Meditation, Scientology, Unitarian Universalists, Islam, Buddhism. They all use it. And they misunderstand this verse. And they all try to prove that you can work your way into heaven. I'm here to tell you, no. The work that was done was done on the cross. That's enough. So it's important that you get this so that when these people come to your door, and they will come to your door, then you'll know how to talk to them. The entire New Testament says we're saved by faith alone, which means believing, okay? Paul says by grace, through faith, you're saved. You and I are saved. But then James come along and says, no, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not just faith. It's faith with works. Whoa. Can they both be right? Yep. Because they're talking about two different things. Paul was fighting against the legalists. Those who say, oh, no, no, no. If you're going to be a, uh, a Jew, you have to get circumcised first. And all the guys are going, say what? And they're going, no, I don't think that's going to happen. You don't have to keep all the Jewish laws and regulations. Same sort of thing happens in Christ, with Christians today. They put that same sort of dependence on us. And we as men, we don't like that either. You can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't chew, you can't go out with girls that do. That's not what it's about. That's never been the gospel. James was not fighting, though, with legalism. James had a different battle going on. He says that he's fighting laxity, that people were saying, well, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. I mean... I believe in God. Heck, I was baptized. Or I came up to the altar when I was 13. I was baptized as an adult. I gave my life to Jesus years ago. I could do what I want. Uh, that's, not, that's not the truth. That's not good. Paul and James are fighting two different enemies, but they both use the word works. When Paul uses the word works, again, he's talking about those uh, the rules and the laws like circumcision but James is talking about your lifestyle okay totally different fight Paul focuses on the root of salvation when you, send your when you surrender your life to Jesus inside something should happen James focuses on the fruit of salvation the root versus the fruit got it so what happens on the outside of your life when you surrender your life to Jesus? Paul's talking about how you know you're a Christian. James is talking about how you show you're a Christian. You got to get that. Paul's talking about, in this faith alone passage, how to become a believer. This is how you do it. James is saying, okay, now that you've done it, this is how you behave. They're not contradictions, just two different subjects, two different uh, theological arguments. Jesus saying, by their fruit. So let's let Jesus get in. He wants to weigh in on this, okay? He says, you're going to know them by their fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. And then Paul says, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to sum it up in Ephesians 2. For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. Got that. Here it goes. 
for a life of good works that God has already prepared for you and I to do. It's for us to do. So there's good works already prepared for us to do. I was sitting there worshiping with Debbie and I saw Debbie's uh, right arm go up, you know. And I thought, 30 years ago, there's no way that woman would have raised her hand. And she wouldn't have let me raise my hand. And then God keeps working in us and the Holy Spirit says, hey, it's okay to do it at a Vikings game. You can't do it in church. Get that arm up, boy. <laughs> and so I did. And so she did. There's three prepositions I want to look at. There's by grace, there's through faith, and there's for good works. By, through, and for. And don't get them out of order. You get them out of order, you're in big trouble. Here's what it says. If you think you're saved by good works for faith, that's not going to work. Paul's saying you're saved by grace through faith. You're simple, you, you, um, you're saved simply by accepting the gift. Okay. So you're saved by what you believe, but you express it by what you do. Does that make sense? Because if they don't know, if you're not doing anything, they're not going to know if you really are. So here's uh, several ways that we can look at. James is talking about how you can show you're a believer. I'm going to go with the negative side first. Real faith is not just something you say. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, James 2.14. What good is it, my brother, if a man claims, keyword claims, claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Now, see, he's not saying he has faith. He's saying he claims to have faith. In other words, he wants to talk about it. He doesn't actually have faith. He knows how to go to church. He knows how to recite the, the uh, commandments and uh, the creeds. He knows all that stuff. He knows how to do the right things. Goes to church. And there's a lot of people who claim to be Christians. Here's why I did some research. Um, Gallup, and this is the latest that I have, is June 29th, 2016. Says that 89% of Americans say that I believe in God. Cool. What God? We don't know. <laughs> Separate poll, 79% say, I believe in God. And 10% said, mm, not sure. That's pretty good. Most everybody believes in God, but they're not sure which God or what God. But here's when we get down to the nitty gritty. 47% of all Americans say that they believe that they are born again. Now, for some of us, that's a negative connotation. I don't want to be one of them born-againers. <laughs> really? You ever read the Bible? Oh, yeah, I've read it. You ever read the third chapter of John? It says you must be born again. If you're going to be walking into the, through the gates of heaven, you're going to have to say that you've been born again. Since the 1990s, Americans have become significantly more likely to say they have no formal religious identity. That religion is not as important to them. And that's continued to go down. But, interesting fact, the fact of those who say they're born again has not changed. Same percentage. I think that's interesting. Yet with all these people who say they believe in God, there is no fruit. Real faith is more than just talking. Now, I didn't, I didn't write this. I'm just repeating what Jesus said, okay? Don't anybody be throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> this is not everybody who says to me, Jesus says, Lord, Lord. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody who has a Christian bumper sticker on their car is going to get to heaven. Not every person who attends church is a believer. Not everybody who is a professor of the Christian faith is a possessor of Christianity. Because talk is cheap. 
Now, in the news this week, let's think about it. Kanye West. Let's talk about him. I didn't listen to his music. It was pretty foul. And now he says he's a born-againer. And the lyrics have changed. And he talks about Jesus as the king. You know what the world's going to do? The world is going to go after him and wait for him to fall. Wait for him to slip. Because he's a baby. He's not even a toddler. How's he going to walk? How does a baby walk? Doesn't. Mom and dad got to hold him and pretend he's walking. And then a little bit later, they start toddling and they fall again. He had a spiritual awakening. He says he's born again. Okay, you claim it. Now I want to see it. The world is going to be looking for fruit. They want to see fruit. And when you see fruit, you're going to go, wow. And here's my question to you. To you. This is a big one. God nailed me with it right away. <clears throat> Those of you who are skeptical, wondering if Kanye West is the real deal, look in the mirror. Wow, you know exactly what you've done. Are you any better? Well, at least I didn't do that, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what you do know you did. Some think that he, uh, Kanye, is a, an imposter. But we're going to look, see if the music changes, the lyrics change, his lifestyle changes, because lifestyle change is a big deal. James, or in uh, Romans 29, Paul arguing against these Jews. Let me read to you. A true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely opening the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. Mm, something happens to you. Something changes. Let's go back to what Moses said. God knows that we will fail, so he will circumcise your heart. He's going to do something to you. The Lord, your God, will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul, so you will live. That's pretty cool. Well, let's go to the, the prophet Jeremiah. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskin of your hearts, O men of Judah and people of Jerusalem. Then Paul says, For it makes no difference whether or not a man has been circumcised. See, that's the outside. The important thing is to keep God's commandments. That's on the inside. That's in the actions. And then Galatians says, where Paul writes this in chapter 6, It doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. The heart needs to be circumcised. Change of life. And when that happens, you will not be perfect. But you should seek after the perfect one. Jesus himself. You see, we all know people who claim to be Christians and who just, you wonder, you know, have they, have they ever washed their mouth, their tongue, their heart? I mean, they're, they're foul in how they live, but they, then they come and, and, and they say they're Christians. Now, I, I think that God's doing something in their heart. So I, I give them a break. They may be the rottenest scoundrel around, but if they're saying they're a Christian, let's help them. Let's not judge them. Let's not beat them up. Let's not throw them out of the church or we'll all be gone. So real faith is not just something you say. And secondly, it's not just something you feel. It's more than just emotions. You could come to church, you know, and get a quiver in your liver, and that might be really great. But if it doesn't make a difference, if you don't go home changed or wondering what's going on in your life, something else is going on. James 2.15, suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. Hmm. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? So we have to go to the theologian, um, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown in a Peanuts cartoon said to Linus, look at, they're all warm inside and they look out and they look out the window and they see Snoopy and there's a dog dish and it's empty and it's cold and he's freezing, he's hungry and he's cold. And Charlie Brown turns to Linus and says, oh, it's so sad. He's so cold. He's so hungry. And then they say, well, 
Should we do something about it? So they go out and they look at Snoopy and they say, be of good cheer, Snoopy. And they walk away. See, Charles Schultz was a Christian, for those of you who didn't know that. And he got that idea from this verse. Don't just say, I feel for you, brother. Or when we get a, a, an appeal for something uh, on the screen where they say, hey, you know, we'd like you to give, this is an opportunity for you to give to this ministry. Don't just say, well, I wish him well. You got to think about it. Is God calling you to do something? Paul says more than just words. It's more than just feelings. James is talking to Christians. He's talking to you. See, when you become a part of God's family, there are responsibilities in every family. And for the real believer, it's to care for other people, especially the believer. 1 John 3 says, If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? It's a big question. Because real faith is generous. It wants to give. It wants to hang out with other Christians. Christians, in order to be authentic, they need to let their love, uh, they'll, they'll be known by their love. So they, they need to let their light so shine, like little Millie. Most of us are pretty good at verbalizing our faith, but we got to get better at practicing it. In the same way, faith by itself needs to be accompanied by action or it's dead. It's dead. Not sick. Dead. And faith is more than just something you think. It can't be just studied and intellectualized and debated and talked over and discussed. It's got to be made a decision. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith and my works by what I do. Faith is odorless and weightless and invisible. You got to do something. You got to show somebody. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in this version says, anytime a person becomes a, a Christian, he becomes a new person. That's a new creation. And that's inside. And immediately, I might add, the old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. rapper Kanye West is not going to be perfect but he's going to be changed and we got to pray for him if you grab onto a 220 wire <laughs> something's going to happen can you imagine holding on to the hand of the creator of the universe and the power he has he could change your life because faith always produces a change and it's not just something you believe. It's got to be more. Even the demons believe. James 2.19, you believe that there is one God. Good. The Bible says good. I'm glad you do. But even the demons believe that. And shudder. By the word, way, the word shudder there means like the hair standing up on the back of your neck. James says, it's, if you can recite the creeds and do all that big deal, I want to see action. I want you to put it in the action because the last one is faith is something that you do. Faith is something you do. Not your grandma did, not your mom did, or somebody you know did. Faith is not determined by what we do. It is demonstrated by what we do. There was a famous tightrope walker. This tightrope walker, his name was George Blondin. And he stretched a, uh, a wire from Ni over Niagara Falls from America to Canada. And he walked back and forth. And about 25,000 people came to watch this. And he did it several times back and forth. Then finally, he picked up a wheelbarrow, put dirt in it, and went back and forth again. And this one tourist was so amazed by it. He said, wow, I think you could do that all day long. And George Blondin dumped out all the dirt and said, I can hop in. <laughs> if you trust me, hop in. If you trust God, hop in. Please rise for closing prayer. 
Lord Jesus, help us to examine our own hearts, examine ourselves as to what it means to be a believer. Lord, in Romans 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And it says in Romans 10, 13, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so, Lord, I pray that there are people in this room right now who have been sitting by the side watching others that they hop in the barrel. They get out of the boat, walk on water. That they realize that God's got a plan for their life and that all they need to do is commit their lives to Jesus. I pray this prayer, Lord. I ask that you, as far as I know, the best I can, I ask that you come into my life and change my life. Lord, give me a new faith, a revived faith. And then, Lord, empower me to walk beside you in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with his favor and give each and every one of you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.